What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well. In today's awesome video, we're going to be going over how to utilize Apple's sensitive content analysis framework that is going to allow us to determine if a photo that we're looking at in an application contains sensitive material, mainly nudity. So really quickly, guys, just to go over how this works, we are going to blow up this image that we have here from the Apple documentation. We're going to be looking at some image that we can either get through a third party app. The user can upload that image through the app itself with the photos picker, anything like that. And we're going to utilize Apple's sensitivity analyzer. We're going to perform some a request that's going to give us back a response that will determine if the image is sensitive or not. And we are going to follow this path. We're going to avoid displaying sensitive content, but give the user the option to show that content. And if it's not, we're good to go. We'll just show the image. So as a quick warning, guys, this does contain slightly sensitive content. This image I'm about to show you does contain a little bit of nudity. It's nothing crazy. If you have an Instagram, I'm sure you've probably seen something like this, but viewer discretion is advised here. Uh, just had to give you guys that warning. Uh, just to make sure that you're not looking at something you're not supposed to look at. So we are obviously going to go through the content analysis here. It's going to say that, hey, this is a sensitive image and we have the option to show it. And this is the image that we are going to be working with here, guys. So um, we are going to need to uh, have some sort of sensitive image for this tutorial, guys. Uh, so you can go ahead and, you know, at your own discretion, pick an image that you want to work with um, so that we can, you know, figure out how to analyze this image for sensitive content. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into Xcode now and start going through the tutorial. So I have a blank Xcode project opened up here, guys, and you guys should do the same. And the first thing I want us to do is start building out the UI. We're going to build out uh, sort of the UI and the logic for this first and then implement the actual sensitivity analyzer API. So guys, the first thing I want us to do is create like a mock shape, like a, a rectangle that's going to mimic this image. So let's go ahead and just inside of this V stack, go ahead and create a rectangle here. And we are going to give this a frame width and height of 300 by 500 dot clip shape dot rect corner radius of 10. Okay. So this is going to just be sort of a mock image for us, right? I want us to go through uh, how we're going to implement the logic for blurring this image out and showing this, uh, these UI components to potentially show that image if it is sensitive. So we're going to go here guys and make uh, two state properties. We're going to say state private var is sensitive and that's going to equal false for now and state private var show sensitive image is also equal false. So really quickly, now let's go ahead and add a blur modifier to this, guys. We're going to say we want to blur this with a radius that is going to be determined on this is sensitive property. So for now, let's just go and say is sensitive, yes. And we're going to say 20, no, zero. And let's maybe give this rectangle a fill of like dot secondary or something like that. So it's not black. Uh, cool. Okay, so really quickly, let's just go ahead and change is sensitive to true. And we should see this get blurred out. Yep, so that is looking good. Now, guys, what we're gonna want to do is implement these two UI components on top of that. It's going to be a text that says caution sensitive image and then give the user the option to show that image. So here we are going to say that we want this to actually be embedded inside of a Z stack so that we can layer things on top of it. And then we are going to say, if is sensitive, we're going to add this uh, V stack here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this in the, this if block guys, you guys can pause the video, go ahead and do the same. Um, or just type this out. Uh, and this is just to save time. Basically, it's just going to have text, caution, sensitive image, font, subheadline. The button is going to toggle this show sensitive image property. And then the H stack or the label for the button is just going to be the system name with I. And these are all of the modifiers. We give it a foreground style of white font, some padding on the horizontal and vertical edges, give it a clip shape of capsule and a shadow. So that's pretty much it for our UI, right? So now guys, if we hit show, what we want to do is also incorporate the show sensitive image property into our logic. So Basically, we are going to want to blur this if it's sensitive and show sensitive image is false. So really quickly, go ahead and add some parentheses here and you're going to say and and 
negation show sensitive image, okay? So now, in this logic as well, we're gonna say and and show sensitive image. So the logic should be pretty straightforward. If the image is sensitive and we are not showing the sensitive image, then we show this stuff. But if this changes to false, or sorry, true, then we can actually show that image. So that's the logic behind this, guys. We want two properties here. One for, hey, is this sensitive or not? Two, are we gonna show it or not? So that's basically it for our logic. Let's go ahead and get started now, guys, with what we need to do to implement the sensitive content analyzer API. So I'm gonna bring the developer documentation back up really quickly, and the link for this will be in the description, guys. If you go to setup, they walk you through how to do this. The first thing we need to do is add the app entitlement. So here, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. You can see the OS requires this entitlement in your app's code signature to use sensitive content analysis. So basically what that's gonna give us the ability to do, guys, is if we go to our settings app inside of the simulator, and you guys could do this on your device as well. If you go to privacy and security and scroll down into sensitive content warning, when you add the entitlement to your app, it's going to allow that to show up in this uh, section of your settings page. If you don't add the entitlement, this won't show up and we obviously need this enabled so that we can utilize this API in our application. So let's go ahead and start this off by adding this entitlement, guys. It's pretty simple. We're just gonna go to our project name here we're gonna to go to targets, and we're going to go to signing and capabilities, and then we're going to say plus capability, and just start typing out sensitive for sensitive content analysis. Go ahead and double click that. It's gonna add it for us, and you guys should notice that that shows up up here in your project navigator. So that's step one checked off. Let's go ahead and continue on with what we need to do to implement the analyzer itself. So what I want us to do now is create a new file, guys. It's going to be a Swift file, and we're gonna call this Content Analyzer. So this is gonna be a reusable component that you can drop in anywhere in your app to analyze potentially sensitive content. So guys, we're gonna import sensitive content analysis and also import Swift UI. So we are now gonna create a class called Content Analyzer. It's gonna be an observable object, and it's also going to run on the main actor. So next up guys, we are going to just have a published property for is sensitive. So this is going to replace the is sensitive state property we have on our content view with this published property because this is going to be computed in our view model and we're gonna publish that change over to our view. So really quickly, we're just gonna have a function to analyze our content. It is going to be an image name, which is a string and async. Cool. So really quickly, guys, we're just gonna write a do catch block. And here's the breakdown of how this is gonna work. We're gonna create an analyzer, which is an SC sensitivity analyzer. And we are going to then say, we need to create this image out of this image name because ultimately this analyzer wants to do this. We're gonna say let response equal try await analyzer dot analyze image, okay? So guys, there's a couple important points about this. Um, this one has to be a CG image. We also have this function called analyze image at URL. It is very important to note that this is a file URL. So you guys will see this analyzes an image file on disk at a URL and runs code on completion. This is not going to work for remote URLs, guys. So if you wanna analyze an image, you're gonna to have to download it, get the file URL for that image, or simply render the image um, after downloading it and uh, cast it or uh, convert it to a CG image, which is what we're gonna be doing here. So we need to get this image from this image name. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say guard let image equal a UI image named our image name. We're not gonna be working with file URLs here, guys. It's just a little bit more difficult. Um, and then we're gonna say else return. And let me spell image correctly. And then here we're gonna say image.cg image and we can just force unwrap that. So now we have the data passed in that we need and we are just simply gonna say self.isSensitive equals response.isSensitive. So if you guys remember from our little diagram, 
we are going to run this image through this uh, request API and it's gonna give us back this is sensitive property, it's just a Boolean that's gonna give us back yes or no. So that's exactly where we are at right here. We get yes or no back from this response and we are gonna publish this property and now we're gonna go back to our content view but first let's go ahead and maybe print out say something that says uh, an error occurred analyzing image and we can pass in whatever error happens there. Um, now let's hop back into our content view and update our logic. So we no longer wanna use this state property here. We're gonna to wanna to implement our content analyzer as a state object. So I'm gonna say analyzer equals content analyzer. And we are going to replace is sensitive with content analyzer dot is sensitive. So we're gonna say analyzer dot is sensitive there and analyzer dot is sensitive there, right? And then guys, we can now delete this property and now we just need to execute this task. So we need to actually trigger that analyze function with our image name. But before we do that, let's go ahead and replace this rectangle with an actual image. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the code I have in here, guys. So we are going to say we wanna use an image here. And caution, guys, this is gonna show the sensitive content. If you wanna blur this out, you can literally just go ahead here and negate that property really quick just for testing purposes. And I have this image dropped into my assets folder. You guys should do the same if you actually wanna work with a potentially sensitive image. Just make sure you're allowed to do that. Uh, don't wanna get, get in trouble with having little kids look at nudies online. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and now execute this task. So on our Z stack here, we can say dot task await content analyzer, or sorry, just analyzer dot analyze image and mine is going to be called summer-ray. So obviously guys, you could implement this differently with however it is you're getting the image, you could pass in the file URL for it or the image name that you have, anything that you need to get this actually rendered as an image so the analyzer can analyze it. So that's good to go. And really quickly guys, before we actually run this on the simulator, I want us to go back to our content analyzer and add a print statement here. So I want us to say print, uh, response and let's go ahead and say response dot is sensitive uh, just to get a print statement back to see what this value is actually coming back as um, let's go ahead and run the simulator now and see what happens so our image is going to be blurred but for some reason this doesn't work on the simulator you guys are going to see the response is false so this should be detecting that this is a sensitive image but I think something's buggy on Apple's end. This doesn't work on the simulator, so we are gonna need to run this on an actual device. So if you guys remember, the only reason the image is blurred is because we have this negation here. So that's what we can do for testing purposes. But I'm gonna show you what this, guy's, what this looks like on an actual device, guys, just so we can verify that this is really working. So really quickly, before I run it, I'm going to remove this negation so that our logic is actually correct. I'm going to run this on my phone, then you guys should see that in the upper right-hand corner of the screen and pay attention to what happens here, guys. We're gonna notice that the image briefly shows for a second, and then once the response comes back and determines that it's a sensitive image, then it gets blurred out. And obviously here, our functionality is working if we wanna actually show that image. So I'm just gonna close the app out there. So how do we fix that? Let's go over what we need to do to update our logic to make sure that the image only shows once that response has completed or we get that response back. So really quickly, let's hop back into our content analyzer, guys, and I want us to add this enum that is going to keep track of our analysis state. So really quickly, it's just gonna be called content analysis state. It's gonna have four potential states, not started, analyzing, an error state, and a completion state. So now we're gonna update our logic inside of this function here, guys, to uh, return the correct state based on the status of our analysis. So first off, we're gonna replace this published property with our content analysis state. So let's call this analysis state. And that is going to be a content analysis state and we are gonna default it to dot not started. And then guys, once this starts, we are gonna say analysis state equals dot analyzing. And if an error happens here, we're gonna say analysis state equals dot error with a message uh, image not found. And then once we get a completion, guys, we're going to say self dot 
analysis state equals dot complete. And we are going to pass along this response dot is sensitive to our completion state. So we'll be able to determine if it's sensitive or not. And now we're going to go back. Well, first off, before we go back to our view, let's also add our analysis state to our uh, catch statement. So if an error happens and we catch that error, we're going to say fail to analyze image with error. error. So now, guys, what I want us to do is go back to our content view, and we are going to utilize a group to switch through that content analysis state and render the corresponding UI that we want, right? So inside of my Z stack, I'm going to say I want to do a switch, and that is going to be on my analyzer dot analysis state. So now you guys will see we have all of these states. And for not started and analyzing, we can just say we want a progress view, okay? So let's actually delete that anal analyzing state. And here, we're just gonna say we want a text with that message to show us the error. And then if it's complete, guys, then we're just gonna grab all of our code here. So let's see, yep, all of this stuff and pop that bad boy in there. So what does this help us do or help us accomplish? Well, now while that analyzer anal analysis state is not started or it's analyzing, then we are going to be able to just show a progress view. So it won't show the image before the analysis has completed, guys. So really quickly, we're just now gonna replace analyzer.issensitive with the associated value we get back from our enum. And we are gonna go ahead here and say is sensitive. So if you guys remember, when we say it's completed, we pass in the status of that response, if it's sensitive or not. So we get access to that in our view now. So really quickly, let's go ahead and run this on my device one more time so we can see if this is working as we want it to with the proper user experience. So I'm launching the app on my device now, guys, and we should see a progress indicator showing, indicating to us that, hey, this is the process is ongoing. And then once we get that response back from our request, it now shows the blurred image with the correct is sensitive state, as we can see here in our console. And we have the option to show that image there as well. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want access to the source code and a bunch of other ops, awesome content, go ahead and check the website out at stephancodes.com. You guys can become a member for just 40 bucks a month. That's less than a coffee a day, guys. And that gets you all of these benefits. You get unlimited access to the site, unlimited support, and that gives you access to all of our pro courses and app templates. So if you guys want to check out our courses to further your skills as an iOS developer, we have a bunch of incredible online courses that you get certificates for that you can add these projects to your portfolio and all of that stuff. And if you guys just want access to a bunch of awesome source code templates, these are ready to go out of the box. So make sure you check that out as well. Once again, like and subscribe to the channel. Comment below with what you think and what you want to see in the future. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Peace out.